everybody! It's Everyday Nerdy, and today we're going to be finishing up the Helmet of Mandalorian. Or, I guess an adjusted version of Boba Fett. But never mind. Um, whatever you want to call it. So, this part was a bit... I was trying... It was hard for me to find something I could actually grasp of how these earmuffs is like... Of what I like... Is what I would like to call them. So, but first, we're going to start with doing a rectangle on a plane. And here I already messed up because you'll see when I tried to extrude this it is inside the helmet. I didn't do an offset plane or I just selected the wrong one. And then so once you do the square, you do fillers on the top so you can get that nice curvature. I, I'm not really good with splines to get them the perfect curvature, so I just prefer doing fillets and things like that. So yeah, so you'll see I have to go inside the helmet. This is why I like to do offsets and try to um, select the correct construct plane because this gets really annoying when you're working on a sketch and it's hard to reach because the body is blocking it, but you need the body. It's a very, it's a very painful feeling. It's not painful, but it's just, you know, it's tedious. So the next, the first thing I'm going to start working on is once you have the body is to how to do the, like, I guess the prism on the bottom of the ears. There's a prism look. So I'm going to do a construct plane on the bottom and on the side of this object. The bottom will have a triangle, a low triangle, so I can have that prism look. And then I do, I usually like to mirror for triangles because I'm afraid of them not being, uh, what's the word, equal on both sides. So that's why I can just draw a line in the middle and then make it equal. And I don't think you need to connect them, but I did either way. And then I goofed up and I made the bottom line a construct line. So now I need to go back and change it. And which is easy, you just click construct and you click the line again. So now for the other side, this is where we add the angles of the prism. So just draw a line, however you feel the angle will look like, because you're just gonna split the body on this part. So yeah, I mean, I didn't, like I said, this part for me was, you know, I said the cheek part was the hardest. This part for me was harder because I didn't have, I think, good images to reference because there were so many. So here, I don't, I think I edited that part out. Where you see there's that weird line on the triangle. I don't know where I did that line, but don't worry, I'm going to delete it. So once it's deleted, there's many ways to do this part. I decided for once to use the intersection tool, which I've never used before, so that was a nice change of pace. I know, I know. yeah, that was actually my first time actually using it. So now that that is there, these side pieces that I made, we can split the body one by one. Turn the sketch on, and you'll see, as soon as I remove the bodies, we have the prism look that's at an angle, and as you can see, the prism is a bit too, I guess it's not tall, but or what, whatever this is, which I'll adjust later on. And then here we're going to, so some of the videos had it like, not video, the images had it straight. Some of them didn't have it straight. I just did my best educated guess. I've learned after Zaku that it's in the Gundam, it's a lot harder to do things when you don't have like the actual figurine or something in your hands. So you can be like, oh, this is like this. Ba going based off a 2D image, I'm, I'm learning it's a lot more difficult. So now since we did the intersection, we lost the body, we're just going to re-extrude the original sketch we had and make sure it's touching the prism we made and just give it, this one doesn't really matter how much space you give it because at the end of the day you'll be pushing it to the helmet. You can just cut off the leftover pieces. So that's it's kind of irrelevant to make it as thin as I made it. Because at the end of the day, we're going to be cutting whatever's left over. So, and here I'm just adjusting some things. As you can see, I have some red warnings, but those are simply usually when you adjust something, it's because it's not catching up, or you just need to reselect the line, which is what I had to do. So, turn that body off because it's in the way. Now, the next thing to do is this top circle piece. So you can, you know, sketch the line. And like I said, please, if anyone can say, hey, this earpiece is completely wrong, it's not how it's supposed to be, let me know and give me a reference so then I can maybe do a good, another video of a better version. 
So here I didn't use mirroring, so how I make sure they're equal on both sides is I just use dimensions and I adjust the dimensions by angle and length. So that's how I know this is going to be cut perfectly. So then here you just do, you just extrude it out. And then once you extrude it out, you can do, well I did another sketch in the inside because in one of the images I saw, I, the top part of this earpiece had like a hole at the top. So, but it didn't have a hole on the side. So I just try to do an outline of that circle piece. And then just, once I get to the tippy top part, just draw a sketch that's um, overlapping, passing the circular part so they can cut a hole there. I don't know if this was accurate. Like I said, this part was a bit hard to see of how these pieces look. So here's where we're going to extrude, and we're going to, you can extrude as much as you want. I'm slowly going to realize that I may have cut a bit too much because we're now going to do an ellipse for this, for that indented piece that you can see. And in retrospect, now that I look, something better could have been maybe a three point arc instead of doing an ellipse because it would have looked more arky then this obviously wide upside down smile, crown, however you want to call it. So once you extrude, you cut inside, you see I, I, I cut too much. So I have to go back to the original time I cut, just adjust it by a little bit. So and now the next thing is to do the arc that's in the inside. Now for this one is when I finally got my life together and I was like, oh, I can just do lines in the three point arc, which is what I should have done for the other one. And for some reason, I didn't think about fixing it in the time of this video. So you can make sure they line up and then here do a three point arc and it actually matches up perfectly. Boom, see? And now for this one, I thought this part was slightly angled. So which is why I did a split body for this part. And once you do a split body, you can adjust you can pull it out and adjust. If I did a split face, I wouldn't be able to do this. And I, looking back, I don't think that's correct. I think it's supposed to be flat and the whole piece is supposed to be angled. But yeah. And now we have this piece, which I don't know what all these pieces are, but it's the same concept. You do one side and I try to make sure it matches the other one. So I know that the equal height, I know is they're going to be equal. It bothers me when things aren't lining up. And then this one isn't straight, so I have to delete it and then redo the line and try to make sure it's straight. And they're not touching, so then you have to use the extend tool. The extend tool is nice. It touches, make sure the lines touch. And now you just gotta extrude it. Pew! And I just did some guessing on how it should be extruded. But this is where I noticed that my little prism was way too big and it had to be adjusted. So I gotta go down to this triangle, adjust it. Then it's gonna skip, I'm sorry, bad editing. Um, and so keep adjusting the triangle. I had to get a visual for it. So I turned on the bodies and just keep adjusting. And eventually it's, I believe it was supposed to be smaller than the piece above it. So that looked about right. Now that we have this, before we mirror it, we have to make sure how we currently have it is gonna be touching the helmet correctly. So first I gotta make sure all the bodies for this earpiece are combined. Okay, cool. It's all combined. Now it's time to move it. Pew. See, it's always too much. Also, um, sorry for any weird things. My mouse started acting up midway through and I have to get a new one now. Um, uh, it might be battery, so I'm gonna double check the battery first, but the battery died, so then the, I don't know, maybe died. I actually don't know. But the left clicking wasn't working, so then I had to go to my my touchpad. And so it made it real difficult to do certain things. I'm not as comfortable on the touchpad using Fusion as the mouse. So this is what I was talking about earlier here, for it didn't matter how much you extruded it, because either way you have to push it, the bot, push the earpiece into the helmet to make sure it touches the entire curvature. And then once that's done, I guess in retrospect, I could have done the same thing I did with the back, where I projected things and I cut it so it lines up. 
but instead I did the bottom piece where I cut it. And, but before I did that, I actually, did I skip the part where, yeah, I deleted the line that was cutting it off in the beginning. I'll put that somewhere in text. I forgot to talk about that. And I just created a new line to give the prism that angled look. And once I did that, I was like, oh no, it's too, it's too weird. So then I was like, let me figure out how to adjust this. And, and then I noticed it was the reason you have that one piece sticking out is because the helmet is not the same size. The front piece is slightly pushed outward because the, this headpiece is pushed in. And so I was like, oh, all I got to do is then slice that one piece off. Easy. So you just take the, you take the prism and you use that prism flat face to slice that, that piece that sticks out. I don't know why it took me so long to figure that out. Let's see when I finally have the brains to do it. So, you see, pew, start it off. And now here's the better part. Now, so the faces, they look like they're all cut up, but usually when it prints, it prints as one, it just has the faces like that. Yeah, not why. And now looking back, those ear pieces look kind of big. Like, I don't think it's meant to stick out that much. But either way, you can do the mirroring. So we're gonna mirror that ear, it's a body. And then the next step is now to do the same splitting of the ear onto the other side. I tried to mirror the feature and it didn't really work well. So I'm just going to actually split the body. And then we have that, we split that, boom. And now there's these two front pieces that I'm noticing now that need to be deleted. So just go in there and pop, delete, delete. And there you go. That's Mando. So I got my last Star Wars shirt. Well, it's not really a Star Wars shirt. It's a shirt that I made based off my dog. So um, to the next one, hope you guys like this. Let me know what other stuff would be cool to make so we can make it come alive together. And I will still be trying to get that CR10 Max video up and running so then I can start printing things on the larger 3D printer and prints like this can happen a lot sooner instead of waiting forever. I still got the Gundam Zaku. Yeah, I haven't forgotten. I know I got a backlog, but I'll get to it. So, until next time. <laughs>